What's up gamers? It's your host Cobra and today we're taking a look at DeFi Kingdoms. Now before we jump in, I want to make a couple of things really clear. First of all, today we are exploring a new project. Uh, I have just started, I made this investment three days ago and have been learning and I want to share a bunch of this with you because I think it's a really interesting project uh, with some potential upside coming fairly soon. However, that said, I am not an expert yet and the intention of this video is so that you can see what I've done so far and learn a little bit along the way with me without having to spend any of your own money. That said, this coverage is going to evolve. So if you aren't already, make sure you're following us on Twitter. Hit that like and subscribe button too. I know you wanna support the channel and that's the best way to make sure that you see the next video on DeFi Kingdoms or the next latest project to be coming out that we're digging into here at the free roll. DeFi Kingdoms is a decentralized finance based gaming platform and this is a little bit outside of the uh, typical game that I'm looking at and that's because I'm not terribly familiar with DeFi in general. However, this one caught my attention for a couple of reasons, namely the in-game economy that they've built so far as well as the roadmap items that are coming in the near future all make a lot of sense to me. This feels like something that uh, can actually grow and scale and remain profitable uh, as opposed to looking kind of like a multi-level marketing scheme. The other thing that I really like about it is that there's real strategy involved here. Uh, there's not a lot of playing the game, especially today, but there is a game involved here and quite a bit to think about, especially from the summoning aspect, which is what we're going to look at today. The other cool thing about this project is that it has launched. We have already missed out on several sales and several opportunities to get in for cheap. I wasn't paying attention primarily because this game lives on the Harmony network or the Harmony blockchain. And this will be my first foray into Harmony. So far, things look good. Uh, and I've been able to play the game entirely through my MetaMask account uh, without having to set up a separate wallet, uh, which is a welcome change. Uh, however, it's performed nicely. The fees are very low. The transactions are pretty quick. And overall, my impression of Harmony is positive so far. Within the game today, the primary things that you can do to earn money are uh, staking, your tokens, you can farm your tokens, and you can uh, go on one very basic quest with your heroes. You can also summon additional heroes. In the near future, and the thing that I am quite excited about is profession quests. And there are four different professions in the game, uh, foraging, mining, gardening, and fishing. And your different characters will be able to go on profession specific quest, which means that you need to build a collection to take advantage of each one of those things. Uh, the next two quests to open up are expected to be fishing and foraging with gardening and mining later on. Uh, but each one of those is going to add additional utility and additional ways to play and earn with your hero NFTs. So the feature that really caught my attention and had me wanting to jump in is hero summoning. Uh, that's because it's very similar to mobile gaming where you use two heroes to generate a crystal and then RNG determines how rare of character, what type of character and what kind of stats that character gets. And frankly, that's gambling, uh, but I enjoy it. And uh, it's a fun way to get started because you can keep your cost relatively low and you have a chance, albeit typically a very small one, to get something really rare worth a lot right away. And that part is exciting and fun. Today, the first clip that we're looking at here is me purchasing my first hero. And what you're seeing first here is the overworld for the overall game. You'll notice it's all pixel art, which is something we enjoy. Um, it also keeps the game a little bit more basic from a development standpoint because those graphics are a bit easier to work on. And the first thing that you're going to notice here as I'm shopping for a hero is that 
I make a mistake right away. Uh, the hero that I purchase is a thief. We are going to use a thief and an archer to try and summon a dark knight. The reason that I made a mistake here is that the third option for 89 jewel would have been much better and actually what I was looking for. And that's because it had eight out of 10 summons remaining as opposed to five out of 10. The thing that I did not realize in my initial research is that the number of summons available on your new hero is going to be based on the number of summons available from the parents that you use. And what you do is you take the one with the least amount available and subtract one, and that is the total number of summons that the hero that you summon will end up having. Uh, because I chose one here that had five out of 10 remaining, and I also hired one that had five out of 10 remaining that meant that my hero was going to have four out of four summons available, uh, which is exactly what happened. I initially thought that it was RNG and it was capped based on the maximum number. Uh, so I used two that both had 10 maximum to start with, thinking that that gave me a chance at getting nine out of nine with my hero. That's not correct. Uh, and I didn't see that in any of the videos that I watched, so I wanna make sure to call that out here for you as well. Now, before I jump into why I purchased this character specifically, uh, we need to look at a couple of charts to understand why. These are important for understanding heroes as well as understanding summoning. Now, first things first, I wanted to try and summon an advanced class hero. That is the second tier that you see on this chart. Um, and doing so means that you want to use specific pairs of character types in order to maximize your chances. None of it is guaranteed. Um, and in fact, the classes of the heroes that you're using are the most likely outcomes. So what we are shooting for here is the Dark Knight. Uh, pairing a thief with an archer is the best way uh, to increase your odds at a Dark Knight. Uh, so we wanted to start with those, but the most likely outcome is that I get either another archer or another thief. And because of that, I think it's important that you understand this chart. Uh, these, this tells you which character classes are good for different professions. Professions are coming soon. Um, and it also tells you which um, stats you want to try and find bonuses for as well as which professions you want to have bonuses for. And when you're looking at the character stats, the ones that are green, purple, or blue are the ones that have bonuses. So since I knew I was going to be summoning with an archer and a thief, I want to have as many of the foraging or fishing stats as possible uh, between the two heroes that I summon with in order to increase my chances of getting a hero that has the right bonuses lining up. Um, in addition to giving me the best chance at getting an advanced class hero, those advanced class heroes tend to be good at the same types of professions that the ones below it are good at. So the stats stay relevant all the way around. The other thing that I learned from watching a bunch of other YouTube videos is that the two key stats for the profession that your hero's good at, you want them to be at at least a combined total of 20 or greater. So a thief is theoretically good at fishing. Fishing requires good agility and good luck. And this hero has 10 for agility plus 12 for luck. That's a total of 22 and a very good score. Uh, so they should be a really excellent fisher when that quest opens up. They also have a bonus in the foraging stat, which is not applicable to fishing uh, or thieves specifically, but because that has a chance to be passed down, uh, it's important and that would be a very good bonus for the archer. Uh, and since I'm gonna be summoning with an archer, there's a good chance that that's what we end up with. And so that's a nice benefit here as well. Um, as I mentioned before, I made a mistake on the number of summons available, uh, but it's important to note that the more summons available, the cheaper it is to summon with them. But of course, the more the hero will actually cost. So getting started, now that we have our first hero, we have 
go over to the portal section and this is where we're going to infuse a crystal uh, to get our summoned hero. And first you'll see me selecting the hero, the thief that we just purchased. Uh, you'll notice it shows you the cost in jewels of doing the summon. Uh, then we go through and we hire a hero. Now I had already done the shopping for um, the hero that I wanted to hire. Now I chose this particular archer for a couple of reasons. Now, number one, I was making the same mistake with the number of summons available and I should have been looking for one uh, that was higher. However, since I already purchased one with only five remaining, choosing one that had five remaining here was an efficient choice. We chose an archer because of the chart I showed you before uh, that maximizes our chances of summoning a dark knight. This one in particular is a nice fit because A, the bonus for our profession is in foraging. Uh, that is the one that the thief needs the most. However, that we've got a good chance of getting a thief here, so that is beneficial. Um, it also has the blue bonus. Uh, the blue bonus is one that will continue to give you bonus stats as you level up uh, under luck, which is a very good um, spot for a thief as well. It also has the green bonus, which is a one-time bonus for agility, which again is good for um, fishing or a thief. And then in particular, dexterity and intelligence are what you need for fishing. Um, this character has a total of 19, which is close to that 20 threshold. Um, but that gives us pretty solid stats to potentially pass down if we do get a fisher instead of a forager. Uh, this, these are all also positive stats for the Dark Knight that we are actually hoping for. So now that we've infused our crystal, we have to go over to the summoner in order to open it up. And that's what's happening right here. Now, as a reminder, we're hoping for a dark knight. We are most likely gonna get an archer or a thief. Uh, there's other potential outcomes here, namely that you can get either a shiny version of the hero, uh, which doesn't seem to have a ton of value today, or you can get a higher rarity version of the hero. Uh, higher rarity versions have better stats, and of course are more scarce, so those are worth more. Here is our result, and we got an archer that is common, uh, and it doesn't have a lot of summons because of the mistake I made. That's unfortunate, I was trying to make another hero that I would be able to do a lot of summons with, and that's not gonna be the case here. However, this hero is a pretty decent outcome for um, using in questing later on. So when we flip the card over here, uh, we can see the stats. The bonuses in mining, that is not the <laughs> one of the categories we are hoping for. However, if you remember, luck and uh, agility are for fishing. We got a 17 total there, that's not super great, but intelligence and dexterity are for foraging. We got a 19. Again, that's not the 20 that we were looking for, but considering that we got a common, that's still a pretty decent result. And I'm expecting that I'm gonna be able to use this hero as a decent fisher. We may also use it to do some additional summoning down the line, um, but that part is to be determined. One other thing that I learned that I didn't see mentioned anywhere else in any real detail is that after you summon, your heroes are put on a cooldown. Now the hero I purchased to use to create the summon was put on approximately a 48 hour cooldown. Uh, it might have been a little bit less than that, but I didn't look at it and see this right away, so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, the newly summoned hero appeared to have a 24 hour cooldown. Uh, the cooldown impacts your ability to do another summon or to list that hero for sale or for rent. Uh, that is a good thing. Um, it makes it a little bit easier to do your shopping. It also slows down the economy from getting flooded with tons and tons of new heroes as people are doing the summons. Uh, I wanna do more summoning, however, it's a bit expensive uh, and I need to wait before I can reuse any of these heroes. I'm also not quite sure what my next step is going to look like since I did make that mistake. I may end up just selling both of these and kind of starting over. However, 
I do think that collecting a bunch of heroes right now is a good idea because typically when you add utility to NFTs, their value goes up and these profession quests are gonna do exactly that. We don't know how much that's gonna increase value and we don't know how much they're gonna be able to generate from those quests just yet. However, I'm quite excited. I think that's a positive strategy. So I may just purchase some more jewel uh, and one and start over without selling those characters so that I can build up my collection. But there will be more videos coming in the future to cover those decisions and to let you know if I'm actually able to make any money. Um, so far, I think we've lost a little bit of value uh, through this process, um, but we are positioning ourselves for uh, that next big pump.